very brief because we have Senator Hatch and Cornyn who have been leading the effort on our side to craft, I think, a balanced budget amendment that would uh, serve the country well. Uh, I would like to say something about the, uh, the chairman here. Uh, being a member of the Gang of Six, you've tried to embrace a bipartisan solution to what is becoming a national security economic crisis in this country. You, with uh, other colleagues, uh, have decided to do something about entitlement growth. You tried to gener re generate revenue in a way without raising taxes, actually lowering taxes. So I want to acknowledge that what you and the Gang of Six did is really a political breakthrough, and I'd like to be part of that process so that we could eventually solve our problems. But here's why I think we need a balanced budget amendment. If we were required to balance the budget, the Gang of Six proposal would have a lot more wind to its back. The Super Committee's efforts to find $1.2 trillion over the, last, over the next decade failed. Good people could not get there under the political construct that exists today. And I would argue at $15 trillion of national debt, the political construct that exists today is incapable of saving the American people from financial ruin. The Congress, in a bipartisan fashion, cannot solve our nation's problems without some help. And the missing ingredient, from my point of view, is a constitutional requirement to do what we all desire but we're unable to achieve. And the reason I think we need a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution is that all of us would be able to go back home and say, I have to do this because the supreme law of the land requires me to do this. And every special interest group can be heard from, but their voice will be drowned out by the supreme law of the land. Right now, the law of the land is the loudest political voices who say no to every hard idea. The only way they will be trumped and the only way we'll find consensus to save this country from becoming Greece, Spain, and Italy is to impose a constitutional requirement on the Congress like many states have imposed upon themselves. If I thought we could do it any other way, I would say so. In 1997, we came within one vote in the United States Senate of passing a constitutional balanced budget amendment. I can only imagine what America would look like today if that requirement had been imposed in 1997. Because, Mr. Chairman, I am confident that if the states had the opportunity to ratify a reasonable balanced budget amendment to the Constitution, three-fourths of the states would do so then when, within one year. The problem is not the states wanting to put limitations on congressional action. The problem is the Congress doesn't want to submit itself to constitutional oversight and a requirement to balance the budget. The day we cross that Rubicon and understand that the current political dynamic will never lead to a balanced budget and change that dynamic by adopting a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution, I think America's best days lie ahead. Without that change, I'm afraid that we'll be here 10 years from now talking about a $20 trillion national debt. With that, uh, I will uh, yield back my time, and I appreciate this hearing.